morning and welcome back to the channel. Um, dog walking again, uh, wobbly footage because I don't have the gimbal again. Traveling light, no tripod, no nothing. I don't know if there's going to be any shots come from this. The, uh, the sunrise, it's about 6.15 in the morning, but the sunrise was quite spectacular. We've had quite a bit of storm over the last couple of days in the southeast of England. That's probably true of the whole of England, but I can only say for here. And um, there's a lot of cloud in the sky. The remnants of last night's uh, bad weather, rain. Everything's wet and sticky and muddy and horrible, which is okay. Uh, and I think there's some interesting sky. So I'm going to go and just see if the lake has got anything interesting above it. So let's see what we get. I've got to admit to an ulterior motive for coming out this morning, um, apart from walking the dog. I watched uh, Tony Northrop's channel the other day and on it he brought up the subject of ISO and the ISO, it, he viewed ISO as a, almost a speedometer in a car and he said that high ISO doesn't create noise. Um, now that in some ways goes against what a lot of people have perceived ISO to do for a long time. He said ISO simply was a, a method of being able to detect whether you had low light conditions and then making obviously the sensor more sensitive to be able to handle the low light. And he said the essence of what he was saying was that it's light that counts. So even with a high ISO, if you have enough light, you're going to get a noise free image. So that got me thinking. Um, it slightly questions how I view ISO, uh, but I'm open minded. So I thought, well, while I'm out taking these shots this morning, I'm going to take some the same shots at different ISOs. There's half decent light, so it's not a question of needing to use a high ISO. Um, so what I'll do is I'll expose to the highlights, which is my normal practice, but I'll also expose to the shadows as well. So I'll end up with several images at different ISOs and also at different exposure compensations, basically dependent on whether I'm exposing to highlights or to shadows. And let's see where the noise is in the images we produce. I'll be interested to find out. I guess you guys as well might well be. Anyway, let's see what we get from this. Oh, as I spoke earlier, the sun is just creeping through the clouds and I'm hoping that's gonna make for quite a nice image or two or several, depending on how many ISOs I use. I'll probably, um take base 100 ISO or base 50 ISO images as a sort of a benchmark and then I'll produce, I don't know, maybe what would be quite noisy. Let's say ISO 1200, something like that, 800, 1200. Part of the region I know full well will be quite or would be quite noisy generally if I had to use that simply to get the image. So let's see how that works. Okay, here we are in Lightroom and I've got two images on the uh, display here. Um, I'm only showing the two comparison images. These two images were taken within moments of each other. The sun is slightly different between the pair of them, uh, slightly because I moved probably between taking the two frames. But if you notice the left hand image is ISO 1000 90th of a second uh, and all the other details up here are the same. And the right hand image is 1 tenth of a second and it's at ISO 50. I noticed the F18 and F19, that's irrelevant. Uh, so the right hand one is ISO 50 and the left hand one is ISO 1000. So you would expect them to be quite different um, if there's a lot of noise there. So let's go and look. But before we do, why don't we just look at the, the water. Um, in the ISO 1000, because the shutter speed is a 90th of a second, the ripples in the water and the reflections down here of the leaves on the trees above the lake are more defined whereas on the right hand side you can see that the ripples in the lake are much less defined because at a tenth of a second we're going to be obviously um, smoothing out and blending that inf information together and also the clarity of the um, leaves that are reflected in the lake are clearly not as, as, as um, uh, clear as the 
much faster shutter speed. So let me just zoom in on those two areas to prove that point. So here we are, you can see that the ripples and the reflections are more defined on the left hand image. The right hand image they're much less well defined and equally the ripples, so on and so forth. So they're the, they're the two, well that's the first sort of major difference that we're seeing. So the first thing I want to do is look at this leaf up here. So because both screens are synchronized, if I zoom in on this one, the one on the right will match it. Remember, the one on the right is ISO 50 and we can see there's a lot of detail here um, in this leaf. Uh, these images have got no sharpening, either of them have got no sharpening or noise reduction applied to them at all. And the um, only slight change was the levels have been set up so that the images look pretty similar um, for comparison purposes, but they're only minor, minor changes anyway. So in the left hand one, which is the high ISO image, it's clear there is some more noise in the leaves and it seems to be color noise. Um, there's a spotting of bright green pixels there and some yellow ones, whereas on the right hand one that's obviously much less defined. Um, so there's hardly much difference there and you have to zoom in one to one to even see it. And I suspect an incredibly small amount of color noise reduction, probably about 25%, and similarly noise reduction would actually smooth the left hand image out to the point that it looked very similar to the right hand image. So let's just zoom out on that. Let's go down and have a look at some of the detail down in the bottom here. This stick that's poking out of the, the lake here. Um, the left hand image again we can see color noise in the surface of the water because it's quite a uniform sort of um, color. It, it's easier to see the color noise because it's um, less detail to clog the issue. On the right hand one, apart from the fact the water at the lower shutter speed is smoothed out, the image itself and the noise is also significantly less in this. But again, I suspect if I were to put in a small amount of uh, colour noise reduction on the left hand one, we'd really not notice that or see it at all. So we've still got pretty much the same sort of levels of detail in the leaves. So that's looking incredibly like a thousand ISO is producing fractionally more noise but it's not <clears throat> to the point we can't control it by using the software. So let's have a look at another image now. Okay here we are again in Lightroom. Um, apologies for the images they're nothing stunning they're only to highlight the points that um, I'm trying to investigate. Um, the left hand frame has got the high ISO ISO 1000 image in it again. These were both shot at f8 this time. The left hand one was 1 500th of a second although I don't think anything's moving enough to make any difference. The right hand one is ISO 50 and it's 1 25th of a second and all of the other settings here you can see are the same. Um, now what I want to do is I'll zoom in on the area that was in focus which is these reeds in the foreground on both images and again you can see the detail is there um, obviously uh, focusing this close in at f8 the far distance horizon and the um, trees on the distant hilltop here are not in focus but you wouldn't expect them to be. So if we concentrate on this area here where the, the bulrushes are and the reeds, um, the left hand image again is noisier slightly. It's not a lot noisier but it is noisier. Um, if we go down to the reeds here and look at them the reeds are definitely clearer so again we've got a problem, a slight amount of um, I think color noise and sort of um, just general noise creeping in but in terms of the image quality they're pretty much in fact I fractionally say the ISO 1000 image ah, might have sharpening turned on so let me just turn that off yes it did ah, okay so the ISO 1000 image had um, sharpening enabled so Let's just disable that which I've just done. I can't show you that because it's on the other monitor that I'm doing those changes. But the left hand image here is that has no sharpening noise reduction and the high ISO one now doesn't have any sharpening or noise reduction. And quite frankly for the sake of applying a little bit of color noise reduction on the left hand image I would be happy with that image at ISO 1000. I can't see anything wrong with that. So let's look up in the sky areas and see what sort of noise we've got up there. 
and the left hand image ISO 1000 again I can't see really much wrong with that sky at all and the ISO 50 one I can't see much wrong with that either um, obviously they were taken a few moments apart so clearly the the clouds are slightly different um, they've moved it was not very windy but they've moved a little bit during the time I was setting the shots up so what do we conclude from all of this it seems to me that Mr Northrop might well have been right that if you've got enough light then high ISO doesn't matter it's when you don't have much light and you're actually dependent on pushing the shadows significantly and hence the high ISO that you'll end up introducing large amounts of noise um, that I don't know if I can demonstrate that because the shadows in these images on these bushes might give us a clue I can't see that they're giving us a clue there either um, no okay so that's my little sort of not scientific test concluded and it would seem that Mr Northrup isn't far from being correct in what he's saying so let's all wind our ISOs up and get crystal sharp images in low light conditions or at least in decent light conditions um, if you've got any comments please put them in the section below I'd be interested in other people's take on the um, the images I've presented and also the conclusions I'm drawing um, or at least partly drawing uh, this has only been a sort of a very uh, rough and ad hoc sort of uh, analysis it's not scientific in any way it's just based on images and um, looking to see what those images look like um, but one to one so thanks very much and I hope you found that informative and go out and play yourselves and see if you come up with different conclusions and if you do please let me know anyway that's it for now well thank you very much for watching that I hope you found it um, informative if you did please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and support it in that way thanks very much for watching